Now, don't give me any argument. The ice is gonna break! He's an interesting guy, man, and, uh, you know, he believes it, so. Kyrie, yeah, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, whatever. The earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you are, make it, make it, T-T-T. Oh. Yeah. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. And the peanut gallery is in a spaceship hovering over the East Coast, monitoring radio transmissions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues which proposed that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, that's because you're listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson, who, by the way, when you type in Neil deGrasse Tyson into YouTube, what's the first thing that shows up next to his name? Flat Earth. Check it on your end and see uh, phone call coming in already, and I, I gotta get through the announcements first. Sorry, guys, not gonna take it just yet, but thank you for, for trying so early. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Tonight is July the 18th, 2017. If it is not July the 18th, you're listening to this, and it's probably a rerun. Which case you could call the phone number, but you're not going to get me. You're, you're going to get a machine. Well, I'll still probably listen to it, but you're not going to be able to talk to me live. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is, I can find in my undergraduate classes bright students who do not know that the stars rise and set at night, or even that the sun is a star. Who said that? Carl Sagan. Back in the day. And uh, Bill Nye actually says that he actually took a class with Carl Sagan. Well, let's see. News, news. Who's got the news? Flat Earth Conference. The rumors are true. The new tickets are opening up. Get on the waiting list while you can. Sign up for the live streaming. If you need press passes, do not try to get three or four press passes. I mean, yeah, you can lie, cheat, and steal. But uh, they're probably only going to give you one or two. So make sure your cameraman is pretty big. The main hotel is now booked. Uh, you can try and see if there's something open up in the main hotel. If you can't make it to the main hotel, there is an overflow hotel. Just go to fe2017.com, and they will give you all the information there. Uh, breaking news on the conference. Amy Denise is going to be replaced by Pastor... Did I get the name right? Pastor Dan Odell. Is that right? Is somebody telling me? I should look that up real fast. One second. Uh, Pastor Dean Odell. Sorry. D-E-A-N-O-D-L-E from Dean Odell Ministries. And David Weiss from D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, is also going to be there. 
So fantastic. Great. So Amy Denise, not there. These two guys will be there. And you can check it out at FE, again, 2017.com. Every, under the featuring category, everything will be updated for you. Let's see what else. Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge still in effect. If anybody in the academic community wants to go after an academic on our side, by all means, contact me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. I will set you up with Jeffrey Grupp. Although if I call him now, it's been so long, he'll be like, what? What are you talking about? I'm in the Himalayas hanging out with Sherpas. And I'll say, I hate Sherpas so much because I know, right? The big money challenge, though, is still in effect. Anyone wants to prove the globe, we've got somebody on our side that can set you up, maybe win big money, big prizes. Her name is Kathy Dunson, and you can contact her at perilandra77 at gmail.com. That's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. D-I-T-R-H, I already mentioned him, is doing a billboard also that is going up near the conference center in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can check out the GoFundMe page called A Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth Billboard or FE Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November. It's going to be a printed billboard. We can send people to stand under it with flat earth signs when we are there. His words, not mine. The next conference meetup thing is going to be at global versus flat earth.com that is global versus flat earth.com that is the denoon institute of biblical research presents the summer 2017 conference this event will be held the weekend of august 5th and 6th 2017 the total conference price is 25 dollars. the highlight for me and i'm going to be attending this is the debate between Zen Garcia, also on True Frequency Radio, and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. This is going to be at the Holiday in Gwinnett, G-W-I-N-N-E-T-T Center, down in Atlanta, Georgia. So check that out if you get a chance. I will be attending August 5th and 6th. I am not presenting. I am just kind of hanging out, seeing what's what, having some fun down in Atlanta in the summer for a couple days, and then flying back to Seattle. The event after that is going to be TakeOnTheWorld17.com, September 15th and 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. The presenter from the Flat Earth side is going to be Rob Skiba. Amber Plaster is also going to be attending. She might even be singing at this. So good for her. Good for you guys. For more, for more information, go to TakeOnTheWorld17.com or you can contact Chris Bailey directly. His phone number is 440 440- Six six eight six three seven three. All right. Do I have all the announcements out of the way for now? I think I do. So phone number to call in tonight is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And if your phone number, wait, give the phone number out. Yes, I already, I'm, I'm giving the phone number out, Peanut Gallery. Why, why are you giving me hassle? Why are you hassling me, man? The, um... The backup phone number is going to be 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So if you're going to call, be nice, because the system works. And no matter where you go, there you are. First call of the night's coming in from Florida. Looks like 954 area code. Let's pick them up. After I have some tang. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm actually drinking astronaut drinks. All right, 954. What's going on? Hey, Mark. How you doing? Hey, you know, I can't complain. And if I did, well, a few people would listen, I think. I'd listen. <laughs> um, so, what's up? <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, I got a couple of questions for you, right? It, it's been bothering me lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of thinking, okay, so I looked up the uh, definition of gravity and, you know, it talks about mass and, um, you know, and, and, and also looked up weight. So mm-hmm. is, is gravity only restricted to the planets? Gravity is, <clears throat> gravity is whatever the builders say it is. In, in the, the model that I drew up, it's electromagnetic. So it, okay. because, and I'm saying this from the simulations that we build now. 
we basically gravity is in a is a, is a dial switch. It's like okay, you want to make gravity two, that's fine. You want to make gravity eight, that's it's whatever you want it to be. It's a force. It's what I call it's like a molecular magnet. So if a normal magnet right. can pull on metals, imagine a molecular magnet that can pull on anything, organic or non-organic. What is the difference right. between that and what they describe as gravity? So if we want you to weigh 200 pounds, that's that's easy enough to do. If we want okay. you to, if you want you to make it weigh 100 pounds, that's e that's easy enough as well. Now, uh, gravity according to NASA uh -huh. Is that only restricted to the planet? It's only it, gravity, according to NASA. Well, not even NASA. NASA. NASA is just the people that supposedly fly around in it. But mainstream science right. says that gravity is dependent on mass. So if you had a dense, and it's got to, it has to do with with the density of a mass. I'm not talking about the density of the air. I'm talking about if you take a ball of lead and suspend it out somewhere in the solar system where there's no gravitational pull things pulling on it, that will right. be that will generate more of a gravitational force than a ball made out of balsa wood. See what I mean? Right. Okay. That, and okay, Einstein's so Einstein says that it warps space time. That, that again, it's this magical. Let, let me let me throw. A, uh, don't want to interrupt, but I want to throw this at you real quick. Neil deGrasse Tyson right. actually said it the best, where he says, "We can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does." Okay, that sort of makes sense. <laughs> but 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 keep right. going. Whatever. Okay, whatever so, you... Go ahead. What I was saying. Okay, so if gravity is mass and all of that. Like, you know, we see the astronauts, you know, on, on the video, and, like, you would think, okay, so with gravity, gravity is mass. Yeah. So, but I've never seen a video where, you know, because if it's talking about mass, your physical body is mass. Right. And why aren't they attracted to one another? Or if, why doesn't the ISS create its own gravity pool the astronauts where they could just walk on it like we walk on the surf surface of the earth that, uh, they're doing that, space uh, no i got an answer for you the and and it's not even my answer is what it's what nasa will tell you because it's, that's a good question it's an excellent question they will say because it, the, the iss is in a free fall state and spinning around around the globe it's constantly wow. under the force of the earth so the gravitational force of the earth is constantly overriding any of the little gravitational fields that are in the ISS. So like, yeah, like if you had two but ball that point... contradicts us. Go ahead. But that contradicts us being under the gravity of the sun. Yes. If, you if you know what? Use that same logic. You got it. You got a point there. That's, that's not bad. Yeah. 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 Because you're right. So the ISS our, is spinning um, around the earth and the earth is spinning around the sun. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. So I was kind of thinking, did you see the video where they, you know, did the demonstration with the water up in space? Yep. Okay. So I'm thinking it's a, it's, it's, it's a liquid, it's a fluid. Right. So, um, why does it not do that? Think about it. If, if they're running the hydraulic system or whatever through that, or even through their veins and their blood, like what in the liquid do the fluid do the same thing? You know, interesting that you, you, in space. interesting that you would mention that because I was at the at, in, when you're on the ISS and I've seen the stuff, the fluid, and actually you can see this in some of the anti gravity planes like the Vomit Comet, where right. the water right. will pool together and form a sphere. Of course, part of it's going to be water tension because water water will form a sphere because of water tension. You know, a single drop versus a whole bunch of drops, right. it, they will connect together. But I happened to, when I was doing business travel years ago, I happened to go to the Remington Ammunition Factory down in mm -hmm. Blytheville, Arkansas. And they showed me how they made shotgun pellets. And, you know, shotgun pellets are perfect spheres. And how they did right. it was, because water tension affects everything. Anything that's a liquid will create some sort of water tension. And they literally take molten lead and they drop it from a high tower. And as it's falling... It forms a sphere and cools on the way down enough to when it lands, 
the sphere is already hardened enough to where they can just you know put it into a, a shovel and then put right. it in the conveyor belt and and turn it into shotgun pellets. <laughs> So, yeah, it, wow. the, the same things down here do happen up there to some degree. But that's different. That's a free fall. Again, remember what we said about free fall. Those are free fall pellets flying through the air, whereas the ISS has, you know, supposedly, you know, free fall water droplets. But, of course, there's nobody up there. It's it's they've never they, right. they simulate it quite well. Again, the general population has bought into it for a long time. You, you see, and there we go. I got a hard time understanding how could you build up a pressure with something yes it has mass but it has no weight how can you how can you spin a pump with the impellers how can you build up pressure with something that has no weight and, and i'm having a hard time wrap my head around that uh, you know? I, I i i know what you mean man there's so many things wrong with the iss uh, the, the subject matter expert who gave me that statement, oh, geez, a year and a half ago now, where he was talking about, he said, look, there's, there's no mechanical way that the ISS can do what they advertise it to do. It can't. The, everything from the air filters to the atmospheric pressurization to the electrical systems to, I don't know, the, 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 uh, the plumbing. Because the plumbing's a nightmare. We've all seen the, the stuff where there's... Um, uh, uh, where they're where they're whipping round water around in their their makeshift shower and toilet, even though there's electrical panels right next to it, open exposed <laughs> electrical panels. It's it's ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, I know, you know but, it, and, and it would it makes you think that drinking water might be a very dangerous thing. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You know, where and, is it going to go with you know if it's free floating like that in your? Oh system? my God! I, the, the 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 sponge baths are supposedly taking. Come on, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I mean, you should have a sealed chamber, an absolutely sealed chamber, to where you go in and you take care of whatever you need to do. And it should probably double as a toilet. I mean, it it would. Uh, it should be the place should be grimy and gross and terrible. Right. And nobody, nobody should. In fact, I was thinking about this last night. I was thinking nobody should have any hair at all. They should have shaved heads and wear shower caps or skull caps. To where they, you know, the because you don't want hair clogging up the filters, you don't want it to happen. It would it would be a nightmare. Amazing. Women with long hair, you treat it no different than you would a right. swimming pool. So. Right. Maybe you need to open up a consulting company for NASA so they could come up with better ideas. Uh, no, the production, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the production techniques are terrible. I mean, Right, right. I, you, 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 th that's the problem when you fake something. You, you just can't think of everything that you need to 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 a hundred percent sell the illusion. You know. Yeah. Um, that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear. Well, well, thank you, brother. I appreciate what you do. Well, thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you for reaching out. And we'll talk to you next time. Definitely. Have All a good right. one. Bye bye. Okay, next up is going to be 310 area code, Beverly Hills, California. Sure, why not? Let's see what they got. Beverly Hills, you're on live with Strange World. What's going on? Wow, I can't believe I got on. My name's Andy. I'm from Beverly Hills. That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the new system right doesn't, give me, doesn't give me too much information, but it does list at least the city. But again, everyone, you know, like... Cell phones, we carry them everywhere, so you could be living in Nebraska for all I know. Right. No, I'm actually from Beverly Hills, California, born and raised. Right on. Wow, that's I feel pretty like rare. I'm the, I feel like I'm the only flat earther in Beverly Hills. You, well, that's pretty rare air, so yeah, you might be. You, I do not get a lot of calls, although you're not the first from Beverly Hills, California that I've gotten. I know, I know. I heard you a couple of weeks ago talking about someone else who called it. Was it 310? Uh, I don't know if it's three one zero. It did, yeah, but it was it did come in. It came in on my cell phone as Beverly Hills. Yeah, and the, the only area code we have in Beverly Hills is three one zero. Oh, and then it was it. I think they were. I think there was. You know how it goes. A bunch of a bunch of kids partying around the computer. It's like, mm -hmm. hey man, this <laughs> flatter stuff, you know. And it's like, okay, sure, I'll talk to you about it. Yeah, so, they but, definitely weren't friends of mine because I, because I don't have any friends who are into flat Earth. Um, but I did have a question <laughs> for you. Yeah, what you got? Um. Okay, so, so 
the group gets together in in the 1500s at some point and really gets the gets the flat earth through right copernicus the public, yeah somehow yeah okay. so uh, copernicus in the 1500s you're saying yeah copernicus was in the 1500s oh wow okay yeah. and um and also i was wondering okay so then so then what happened at that time to for them to decide to make that push at that time what was going that's on that's just time? it you know that's what I'm just saying? it that's the big mystery because copernicus himself wouldn't even publish his own work while he was alive he made sure wow. that his final thesis was not released until years after he died so you i mean his globe pushing thesis yeah the globe pushing thesis the uh, the official okay. heliocentric model but what I think uh -huh. happened was, I think it was part of the system, meaning the people, I think it was way beyond him, meaning the powers that be, I'm not talking about us powers, I'm talking about the, the, the beings that actually built this place, put it into effect mm -hmm. and said, okay, we got to get this thing pushed in now, because the rate that technology was increasing, I mean, think about it, really the most interesting stuff in our civilization. Oh, I see what you're saying. Been over the last so they years. were just getting worried about people being able to figure it out. actually because everyone already kind of thought oh the earth is flat but but um they you know they never really had were able to prove one way or another so they were able to just let them keep on believing whatever they wanted is that what you're saying Bing, bingo yeah until you invent the internal combustion I see what engine, you're saying okay yeah until the mm -hmm. until the internal combustion engine is created there is nothing that you can do to prove mm -hmm. this thing out one mm -hmm. way or the other it, you're you're stuck so that's, meaning a plane that, engine or a train engine uh plane engine plane engine i mean the internal combustion engine went went into cars but of course they they immediately uh -huh. retrofitted it to for for airplanes and world war the world war one planes didn't do much but by the 1920s we had some you know decent planes planes you could fly in and not die at decent altitudes i mean you were still worn right, above so the weather yeah but, so but that's that's mm -hmm. why you had to do it so that's why that was the timing of it. You're saying, yeah, yeah. You do it early but what, enough, but, but that but that was the way before. The, what was happening then technologically? Because it seems like nothing was really happening technologically well, that would have allowed them to figure it out. You were civilization was branching out. The new world wasn't quite discovered yet, but people were doing a lot of exploring back then. And so what you wanted to oh, do was, even, even though they only had ships, you wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that you didn't have a bunch of gung ho guys. Can't, like you uh -huh. know first first group goes to antarctica dead second group dead you know there's only so many times <laughs> you can see that before all of a sudden you you have dedicated right, right. Yeah, you just don't want that to happen so it seemed like a good enough time and, i imagine okay. <clears throat> yes and also one more question huh? where the heck who's the genius that came up with this it's almost like seems it almost seems like that it almost seems like it's too hard to have imagined and thought of as a, as like a you know fiction writer or fiction thinker uh, to have to have thought of something as complex as right. the universe the, and it was it was so beyond who the hell us. Came up with that and is it the one the one that came that up with that was the okay. same was the same being or group advanced civilization that came up with the idea of making the oceans three percent salt. Because when you do that, that that one little idea reduces sea travel exploration by ninety five percent. Because you can't drink the water that you're sailing on. That course, remember, yeah, that that explorations sense. was were literally limited to your water supply that you took with you, unless you stopped at islands. And th that alone, mm -hmm. I mean, that that was a subtle thing. So yeah, you're right. It, it's beyond our imagination, but not beyond theirs. But Mark, doesn't it make you? Doesn't it make you feel like, like there has to be something about, like there has to be some truth in what they're saying just outside the dome that that, that space and the universe and the round balls and everything. Like, how the hell could they have? Like, what is that? It sounds more like a fiction writer than a advanced. You know what I mean? Well, like, you remember you don't. And why? And how did they get that? Well, don't don't think about. Well, we. Well, that's just it. The the space and the planets and everything. You don't have to have that outside of here. If you if you of don't want, of course not. Of course not. So, again, it's it that the the How entire are they of that though, the entire heliocentric model is beyond was beyond. It isn't now because our science fiction writers are are very very good now. But look what they were inspired from. Mm -hmm. So, but five hundred years of ago, course, yeah. that 
that concept mm-hmm. was so far beyond, and which is again amazing that it grabbed hold as well as it did. Yeah, it, it went it went hand in hand with science, so it's brilliant in that regards. But but yeah, and you're what right. What country was that in that they first? Uh, what country did they first start pushing that? And what was that? Where was that? Uh, crap. Where's Copernicus Where from? Copernicus was and all them. Um, uh, I'd have to. I'd have to. Well, it was definitely in Europe. Because the uh, New World hadn't yeah. been discovered yet, so I guess so this in the is pre fourteen ninety two. You're saying? Nope. This I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. But, well, before before the New World was colonized, I don't. I mean, co- Columbus coming over in fourteen ninety two. Yeah, that counts. But then again, the Vikings were here before that, up in Canada, and nobody really mm-hmm. cared. It wasn't really until the colonies started happening right. in the in the sixteen hundreds and then the seventeen hundreds before it really took off. So the New World really was so the Pilgrims thing. and them. Yeah. So the pilgrims and them were already thinking globe. Yeah. Yeah. They they were, all, but of course, remember things were traveled so slowly back then that it did, really didn't. Uh, you know, the the average person, remember their education. Only adv- only university students knew it. They didn't teach it in schools for oh, oh for the longest time. So your average person, they were lucky if you could read and write at all. So the, so, the, they the whole... even, so they didn't care either way. No, no, they didn't. They weren't even advanced enough to even care to even, man, that's crazy. Yeah. But the explorers did. So they did it at the perfect time. Yeah. The explorers yeah. did, yeah. But yeah. They, they started anyway, the globe at the, they started pushing at the perfect time. Okay. I don't want to take what, up any more what, time. Sorry. What shout? No, no, it's okay. What shout outs you want to give? Cause we got about 45 seconds till the music kicks in. Okay. Shout out to my sister, Alyssa. Uh, in West Hollywood, and my dad also in West Hollywood, and to my mom, Janet, who I love very, very much. Wow. I love you guys. Fairly sincere. All right. All right, man. Well, thank yeah. you. And I will I will look for your phone number mm-hmm. if you ever call again in the future. I will. That was too easy to get through to you, man. Wow. Uh, but it's the beginning of the show. You've got, there's actually three calls now behind you. So. It was so. It was right away. That's amazing. All right. Okay. All right, man. Have a good one. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, let's pick up another one just before the break, real quick. Oop, oop. Uh, six two six. Are you there? Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, hey. Um, I'm gonna mute you. Just stay yes. through the break because we're going to music, okay? All right, no problem. Okay. And uh, uh, San Marcos, Texas. I'll try to pick you up after that. You're stay through the break too. listening to the true frequency radio network no hate no hype no 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 fear Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. We're taking calls tonight, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Before we bring on that call from California, quick little announcement. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And Robbie D will also be on live with us tomorrow. And Patricia is going to be doing a live on the air blood test. She's going to find out if she's RH negative because people have been saying that, well, it has something to do with what? Something? I don't even really know what the RH negative test is, really, to be honest. But we let's let's find out if she's human, to be perfectly honest. And also the Flat Earth UK mixer is going to be this Saturday at noon in the town of Leamington Spa. That's out in the UK. Patricia Steer and Nathan Oakley plus Martin Leapke will be there hosting, plus many others attending. It's in Jepson Park. It's free. If you want to know more about it, contact Miss Steer. That's M I S S S T E E R E at gmail.com for the address and other stuff. And let's see, you're supposed to do the plugs at the halfway. 
Well, no, there's more plugs. Peanut Gallery is giving me crap because I'm, I'm actually giving Patricia plugs right now. Anyway, let's go to the phones, shall we? Sorry for keeping you guys on hold. Let's try California first, then we'll go to Texas. All right, California. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Mark? How's it going, man? Uh, you know, it's going actually pretty good. It's been a busy couple of weeks. A lot of, lot of flatter than mainstream. Can't wait to see what the big players do with us soon. Will CNN destroy us? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Dude, I don't think there's anything that can beat this because nothing beats the truth, man. <laughs> I know. I know. And actually, if you believe in fate, I think that we're we're in for a heck of a summer because the Denver Post, for example, they didn't have to run us on the front page. They didn't have to run the story at all. They could have buried us in, in you know page 20, but they didn't. They ran us front page, top of the fold. And they didn't have anybody come out against us, which was amazing. You know, why not end the article with a couple astrophysicists calling us morons or a quote from Bill Nye or a quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson? I mean, they could have gotten all sorts of stuff, but they gave us a fair shake. I love it. Well, probably because Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson are kind of jokes, you know? It's oh, yeah. Pretty easy yeah, they to are. through them. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is such an actor. It's so ridiculous uh, watching those videos where, like, he can't even name the the elements that make up uh, our world. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> like, heck, he can't he didn't, name he didn't the, know what the curvature of the Earth like, was. Yeah, well, no, there's one actually where he had it. It's broken down, like they broke down the video where you can tell he had it written down on his hand, and he still got it wrong. <laughs> that's that's pretty bad. Yeah, there are there are actors uh, that would kill but, for the resume that he's got. He has gotten so many choice roles in the last few years. I mean, for God's sakes, he was the last. He was literally the last person you saw at the end of Zoolander two. He was in the Superman versus Batman movie. Is and and it's it, all he has to do is play himself. It's always Neil Tyson as himself. Kills me. I'll be dead honest. I had no idea who the man was a year ago. Mm-hmm. Before, uh, before I actually started looking into uh, whether or not the Earth is flat or not, which yeah. was in like December, I started on my little rat trail. Mm-hmm. I was outside one day and I look up and it's like eight o'clock in the morning and the sun's up and I look over my other shoulder and the moon's up and I'm like, hey, what's in the sky over Africa right now? Mm. And so I looked up what was in the sky over Africa and they were looking at three quarters of a full moon at like eight o'clock in the morning. Interesting. Or eight o'clock at night, like whatever. Uh, Cause they're 12, they were 12 hours away, like Pakistan, whatever it was. Uh, oh. They were like 12 hours away. And so, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm no like astrophysicist, but I'm pretty good at playing pool and I know angles pretty well. And that's, too many angles, too many objects. Right. And so I started digging into things. Uh, and it's nuts because I actually, I drive for Uber. Okay. 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 Uh, here in LA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I drive around listening to your interviews, uh, you and Patricia. Uh, if I listen to any kind of music, I listen to stuff like ODD or something like that. Sure. And so I always get people asking me, like, what are you listening to? Because, like, they'll find it interesting, and they'll just start talking to me about it. Nice. And uh, on top of that, I actually had to, uh, because to cover my butt, uh, I record everything that happens in my car, audio, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just in case. And so I started taking, like, little clips of it. Because, like, there's, like, times where it's, like, 5, 10, 15 minutes long where I'm talking to these people, and they're actually looking up what I'm telling them on their phone while they're in my car. Nice. Like, checking it out. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and so I started posting these, like, stupid videos on uh, YouTube. Uh, it's just Flat Earth Uber. <laughs> that, that's what your channel's called? And... Uh, yeah. Well, no, that's uh, my channel is just my name, Josh Walker. Oh, cool. But but the video is uh, called Flat Earth Uber. Dude, I, 
Yeah, yeah. There's like, uh, I just tag every one of them. It's because I'm an Uber driver and I talk about the flat earth to these people. So I just put flat earth uh, and I put like the person's name or what they did, like their job. Because sometimes I think of people from like SpaceX, man. And I get them in the back of my car. And that's really cool when I talk to them. Because then it's like, I get to talk to them about, hey, what's up with the missing like footage? (laughs) Why, Uh Why isn't that ever released? And they're just like, uh, I don't know. And so it gets them thinking about it. And hopefully, like, they start asking questions at their work. Not to get anyone in trouble over there, but... Sure. Uh, I mean, it'd be cool to, you know, get them to start thinking about things. Uh, I mean, I've picked up, like, engineers and stuff like that. I talked to them. Yeah. Uh, and all I do is just have, like, you playing in the background, dude. And all of a sudden, they're just like... Did he say flat earth? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just like, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and like, I always, I always take it from a, an angle of like, I don't completely believe it, even Good. though I do. Good. Just because if I did, I would come off nuts because I also believe in the Bible. And if you actually break down what's in the Bible, man, <laughs> what you believe like yeah. what there's evidence of, like the Red Sea crossing, how there's the gold chariot parts under the oh, Red yeah. Sea, how they found the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah. They found like uh, like little uh, coins with like David's seal or David's uh, name on it or whatever. Like there's all kinds of evidence. Uh, oh, yeah, things. don't, and if don't you get me started. Stuff, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I touched on a couple of them in the clues. Tower but of Babel. You, you, are, you are 100% where... Yeah, there will be people that will talk to you about the most out there things about reptilians, about the Illuminati, about blood rituals, about all kinds of stuff, about seeing demons, about talking to demons. And then you mentioned Flat Earth, and now you're the crazy one. Yep. And it's like, okay. Hey, um, do you have any uh, any Uh, shout-outs? Nah, dude, I... Just to everyone out there, I listen to uh, you and Patricia. I list, I like checking out like ODD. I love listening to Ross Ski, but I've been listening to him for a while. Right on. Way before he was into flatters. <laughs> awesome. It's uh, great. And I, I actually, I, when he came out with this whole flatter thing, I took it in stride, man. I didn't really call him an idiot because I had seen he had already backed up everything else he had told us. Sure. Uh, like, sure. dude, the heliocentric model is nothing but the newest age of sun god worship. Nice, good one. Hey, hey, uh, hate to, hate, hate to cut you old... off, man, but I got, I got like three or four calls stacked up. So we, you gotta, oh, you gotta head crap. off. Into the I'm night sorry, night. man. I forgot no, no, about it's that. It's okay. You don't have to apologize. It's group. All right, bro. All right. Have a good one, though. Okay, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call in late. I'll call in some other time, man. Okay. Have a good one. See ya. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, by the way, very much for calling. Love the enthusiasm. Love it. Let's pick up San Marcos, Texas. Let's try this guy. Oop, oop. Hopefully I didn't click the wrong button. San Marcos, Texas. Are you there, man? Yeah, San Marcos, Texas. I am 512. Chip here, dude. Hey, what's up? Hey, I made a few notes. Actually, I want to cover a few things. Um, the, uh... The, the atmosphere, we got 80% nitrogen, we got 20% oxygen, and then trace gases, which are a lot of those made up of what they call the noble gases, the inerts, far right side of the table of elements. We got helium, neon, argon, krypton, and radon. Yep. I got a good friend who is a neon light guy, okay? And I talk with him and ask him questions. What do you do? How much voltage? How much you know, neon and so forth? Well, you go over to youtube dan dimension he's got a video called let there be light and he does an extremely good case for the fact that when before the sun actually comes up and we get light we're actually seeing light in the atmosphere that we're dealing with fluorescence and i've heard um david weiss from ditrh talk about the, the fluorescing the atmosphere so if you've got the sun as an anode or positive and the moon as a negative um that's charging up the atmosphere that the neon apparently lights up the perfect spectrum of all the colors we see in the atmosphere, from the light blues to even the dark reds and oranges of sunlight. So if anyone's going over his channel, Dan Dimension, Let There Be Light video does a really good job. He has a Tesla coil. He's got all the noble gases and little tubes sealed up, and he runs it by there. 
and they fluoresce in colors you know, completely replicate our, our sunlight and atmosphere. So I'm giving that a lot of credit. That's science, and I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, in fact, I, I know which video you're talking about there, and it's an interesting premise, interesting premise, where the noble gases yeah. – Noble gases on a large scale can give us the colors that we always attributed to just whatever mainstream science was feeding us in regards to the atmosphere. And not only that, our atmosphere is you know a layer cake. We've got the denser denser gases down low, and then as you go up, those those you know they're at the high end. Neon is is way up there, um, and then they're going to be at the top of that layer. They're frosting, if you will, of the layer cake of the atmosphere. And then right. to add to that, there's something called electrical discharge machining, and this is uh, Rob Skibid mentioned the guys over at Electric Universe. Even though they're doing with the universe with the you know infinite you know vacuum and plasma and all that stuff. Uh, they're all, at least on point about what electrical discharge machining does. And they've got a, a um, couple videos that are done by Wall Thornhill that show that the moon and Mars as well, though I'm skeptical of Mars because I'm sure it's probably a lot of, of CGI. But, you know, we can see the moon. i got the telescope. I can look at the moon. We've seen it day in and day out. You've got craters that uh, have flat bottoms and they've got central peaks. You've got craters that have little craters on the rim. You've got crater chains. Even a lot of these craters exhibit hexagonal shapes and so forth right. um there's uh one of the way you get the flattest surface you know when machinists want to get the ultimate flat reference surfaces they use electrical charge machining and there's two ways to go about that there's the anode discharge and the cathode discharge and they produce different styles another one is called a lichtenberg figure if you ever seen a piece of plexiglass and it looks like there's a tree or lightning inside these yeah. guys will charge these plexiglass things up to high voltages and it literally just take a nail and whack it and suddenly, boom, it discharges, and you get a very tree-like pattern that, that arcs throughout this entire thing. And it, you know, it's natural art. So all these things are all pointing to the same, as you say, the simplest explanation, right? You know, yeah. And the one thing about Occam's razor is all the scientists, scientists never shave themselves with Occam's razor. They shave everybody else, right? But they're not willing oh, to pull the Occam's razor on their own face, right? Nice. You know? And then here's another option. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, another one is I'm, I'm also an amateur astronomer, and so um, I'm always observing the sky. And one of the things they tell us is, you know, okay, you've got Mercury and, and Venus, and you get, you get to see them because they're on this side of the sun and so forth. However, if you really observe the disk, you know, Venus goes from a, um, a what they call an evening star, quote, to a morning star. And I was headed off to Houston the other day, and the, the moon was just sitting on the horizon. You know, the sun wasn't quite up, yet the moon was fully lit. And I'm looking at Venus, right? And I, I think about this. I'm saying, okay, Venus is just with all the rest of the stars is going to move in this circular pattern that we see when we look at Polaris and see the whole thing rotate around. Well, the only thing that makes Venus goes away is just the sun completely fluoresces the atmosphere and we no longer see the stars, you know, display system, whatever. And so it occurred to me that Venus doesn't really go behind the sun. It just simply gets blocked out by the light of the atmosphere. And I'm, I'd like, you know, anybody else you got this amateur astronomer, anybody inclined that way, do the observations to see if that bears out. You know, yeah. that, that it really just moves across the sky just like everybody else. Right. Yep. Like it. So, and then another Another good one you're going to like, and because you're a Star Trek guy, uh, Star Trek Next Generation, there was an episode of Star Trek where Data plays the Stratagema expert, and he's like the Stratagema champion of the universe, right? And they put these little things on the end of their fingers, and they wave their fingers around, little cubes move around. Mm -hmm. And at some point in the game, you know, the Stratagema champion is just, he becomes frustrated, he, he pulls off all the little things on his fingers, he gets up, and he, you know, he's just angry, and he just walks away, and they're like... Data, what did you do? And he goes, I was not trying to win. I was only going for a draw. And see, yeah. that's all the flat earth has to do. We don't have to win. We just have to go for the draw. Good one. Right? Because they're just going to walk one. away frustrated because they're sure they've already got us defeated. They come in with the game one. You know, yeah. they think, oh, well, it's no problem. Just like the art of war. You know, the guy goes to fight and looks for, for victory. And instead of the guy who always has the, the game won and goes in there um, to fight it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, this is this is nothing new. It's been around for centuries. So excellent. But these are all points. I just you've got such a great forum, and like I said, you've got a community. We all have a community. There is there is no leader. You know, take one of us down, another one pops up. It it, it doesn't really matter. Take down a channel. We all rally behind a guy. Call us whatever names you want to. And then you know what? We got an army of closet flat earthers. Okay, yep. and those guys are the guys that come out. When the battle began, you know, we, we go out there, right? There's just a few and they're like, oh, let's go take them out, you know? And then once their forces come out, 
boom, somebody's like, oh, where'd those guys come from? Yeah. Yep. They'll know when to come out. We don't need them yet, right? All you classic flat earthers, yeah, you just stay where you are. When You know when, when time is up, right? <laughs> and then the battle's already won. You know, it, it, it's a given, right? It's just a yeah. given. So it, it, it just... This is this is fun times to be alive, you know. Just a lot of fun. So I agree. Uh, agree everybody out there, man. you know, have a great time. All yeah, right, man. We're doing. I'll pick up more calls, man. All right. I will. All right. You have a good night. Yeah. Uh, lo- live long and prosper, my friend. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right. Next call, we're gonna pick up. Uh, thank you very much for Chip Baker. Chip Baker was the the guy that came up, by the way, with the intro music and music at my halfway point. So great guy. Let's see who we got. Denver, Colorado, maybe 303 area code. Let's try him. 303 area code, Denver, Colorado. You're on. What do you got? Hey, thanks for taking my call, Mark. This is Tony. Hey, Tony. Tony from Denver. Hey, I'd like to disagree with that last caller. The Denver Post made it official. You're the father of the flat earth. We, we oh, do don't, 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 don't start that. <laughs> That's when, well, in fact, I had uh, DITRH literally within, I think, 60 seconds of reading that article. He mentioned, he goes, so should I start calling you father now? It's like, oh, man, don't. Don't do that. I mean, it's I'm I'm flattered. Look, I I'm glad that I could create the dummies version and con- connect the dots and inspire other people to to make YouTube videos. But I didn't invent flat Earth. Flat Earth came 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 along twenty generations before me. So, but thank you for for bringing up that quote from the article. Yeah, the post they also claimed that no flat earther at the Denver meetup could answer how. Do you explain the solar eclipse in August? Could you do that for them? I know they're listening to you. Oh, well, for me, remember, my model is way easier than, you know, the the two big models that are out there. In fact, I did a hangout today where we were discussing. It's like, okay, dome or no dome, enclosed or not enclosed. And if it's an enclosed model, the everything in the sky is fine. Uh, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, you want, again... Think of what we can do, and I, I know I'm dating myself when I say this. Look, I'm I'm 49 this year. That is, if you go to a planetarium, if you guys have ever, and I don't mean go to the planetarium on the weekends and watch Laser Floyd or Laser Zeppelin or any of that stuff. I mean, go on a normal day. Go and ask the planetarium guy what can be done and what can't be done. It's all There's almost nothing that cannot be done when it comes to the sky. You know, how do you do a blood moon in a planetarium if there's no Earth between the the sun and the moon? You just make it red. You Same thing with the waxing and waning crescents and the eclipses. You can simulate eclipses. Now, could the moon be doing the eclipses like the solar eclipses? Yeah, possibly. Sure. And you don't necessarily need the moon to do it, but, you know, since it's over there, sure, why not? What the process involved, I have no idea. Look, we have 4K monitors. Now, imagine if you had a million K monitors, what you could do up there. So, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I know all the processes that go on up there. I can only extrapolate, like our ancestors before us, what, how we would interpret what happens using our available technology. You know, what did we say before computers came out? That was a tough, that's tough sledding. Then you kind of have to lean on the Bible a whole lot harder. So anyway, that's that's the answer I got. I'm really surprised that nobody bothered to. Actually, you know what? That's not even true. Bob, uh, Bob from Globebusters and ODD were there during that article, during that interview. Yeah. Eh, who knows? Yeah, that's the, the guy... way they wrote the article that nobody nobody had an answer for him. Yeah, um, I'm not going to question. Maybe you have the answer for. Him. What do you got? Um, earlier we were talking about what gets taught in schools. And I've always wondered about the moon landings. Uh, other countries, Russia, China, do they teach their school children that Americans landed on the moon and they still haven't done it for 50 years? Regrettably, yes, they do because they there's no because we're the only ones that actually produce pictures. But but that brings up an interesting point, which I've all which has always bothered me, which is why I included uh, I've been including more and more Russian space propaganda uh, artwork in my slides. Because look, the Russians were winning this the the so-called space race. So if the Americans got there first, you know, if you believe this story, why did the Russians just pack it in? Why did it stop there? The space race doesn't stop at the moon. 
everybody should know this is like race to the moon. It's like no, no, the magazines printed. Oh, it's winner take all. Whoever gets to the moon first, that's it. They're kings. And the other guys can go suck it. No, that's not how it goes. The Russians would have put somebody on there, and then we would have three, and they would have four, and then we would have eight, and they would have nine. And then Time Magazine would run a story saying, is, is the, the moon the, new, the next Cold War? This thing would have kept going. It'd be going on today. I've never seen in the history of sports something, and it really was a sports competition in this sense, where you know the first person crosses the finish line and the rest of the runners just walk off the course. It's, it doesn't happen. So, yeah, but to answer your question, yes, that's exactly what they teach. The Americans got there and then nobody else tried. The, you know, the Chinese supposedly have a rover, been there since 2013, but, but they don't go by the Tranquility Base. They don't go by the moon car and accidentally tip over the American flag. Why? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, but, so that's why it always bugged me, which is why the international uh, people that are, are looking at the flat Earth are you know finally latching on but it always surprised me it's like why would everybody believe the americans you know if you're inside the united states like you are yeah go go team rah rah wave the flag but if you're in russia or anywhere in europe what you really you're gonna take the americans word for it really those guys the american military the guys that brought you napalm and nerve gas and atomic weapons really you gonna believe them i think it would be really difficult anyway sorry i ramble what else you got well, I got one last one, and I'll get out of the way. Uh, right. Some people say the South Pole has a star like the North Pole, right? Um, you know that we call Polaris, right? Do you know the name of the South Pole? South Pole star? Do you? I don't think there is one, but uh, I was wondering <laughs> what you thought. No, no, I don't. I don't know the name of the star, but but people ask me, does it exist? You know, does it? Do, is it the mm -hmm. same as the South Pole? And they say, you know, lots of people are kind of finagling the model around to say, well, you know, it's it, it just kind of looks like a South Pole star. But I'm going, look, I've seen the time lapse footage taken at the equator from non-military personnel. And for me, it's not that hard. You know, it, again, an enclosed system, it works way, way better than uh, just an infinite plane. And here's why. If you have a planetarium that's really, really, really big, and I mean thousands of miles big, way bigger than a Truman Show model, then you're going to have multiple display systems, multiple projection systems. So that if you're on one side of the equator and I'm on the other side, you know, with some distance, we're talking to each other on cell phones, I'm going to say, hey, I'm looking at the belt of Orion. And you're going to say, yeah, I'm looking at the belt of Orion too. And we both think we're looking at the exact same belt of Orion, but we're not. We're looking at completely different belts because that's how the display systems would work. That's how we do it in simulations now. We can tailor the sky to not only geographic regions, we can tailor them to people if we wanted to. So that's so yes, I believe in a southern pole star, and I believe it's part of the display system. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's all you have to do. I mean, otherwise you're dancing around a lot more. Again, not knocking people that, that believe in the infinite plane model. Great, fantastic. At least you don't believe in the globe. But the, the enclosed system, the dome, the firmament, whatever you want to call it, makes things so much easier. So much easier to, to explain. I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be lazy when I do this. I'm going, look, it's, that's what I would do. Because if I was going to build it, I would try to build it simply. I'm not saying that God's lazy. I'm saying that God's efficient. Anyway, you got about 30 seconds to the break. You got anything else? Yeah, one shout out to all the flat earthers out there. A year from you know this month, um, next year, let's all remember to buy one extra Father's Day card and send it to you, Mark. Aw, <laughs> that's terrible. The father of the flat earth. Thanks, Mark. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. You know, if if Matt Matt Boylan finally hears this, he's gonna he's gonna lose it. He's gonna have kittens. So. Hey, have a good night. Thanks for taking my call. All right. Anyway, have a good one. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Denver, Colorado. Okay, phone number to call in after the break is 720-897-6111, 720-897-611, or you can try 213-233-3998. I know we have a little bit of a lag with 720 because I'm actually forwarding it through the switchboard, but the, uh, the 213 will go straight into the switchboard. So 213-233-3998. If it works better, heck, I may change over to that number. Although. I'm 
This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. And we are still taking phone calls. I've put Australia on hold. So uh, we're going to probably pick him up instead of doing shameless plugs and Flat Earth News because, well, he's from Australia. We don't want to keep him waiting because he's in the future. All right, let's grab him. Australia, are you there talking to us from the future? Hi, is that the fuck? Is that, is that the father of Flat Earth? <laughs> oh, really? You're going to try, try to turn this into a thing? Oh, man. You, you know they're going to make T-shirts out of it. Oh, There's going to be shirts and, and memes and everything. <laughs> I don't... Hey, you know, hey, I... hey Trump, Trump even... Go ahead. Uh, I, I was going to say, Trump even mentioned you on, on Patricia Spears' show. <laughs> 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 I saw that. I saw that. I'm hoping that uh, that he gets actual a second interview. Uh, that um, that was that was, that was good. I like that. That's hilarious. Hey, there's exciting news out of Puerto Rico. Did you hear they they've picked up a radio signal 11 light years away? No, I had not heard that. <laughs> I, I can't I can't shoot my radio in from 100 kilometers away, but I can I can get something from 11 light years away. It's amazing. Yes. Where? Good on. Just shameless. Absolutely <laughs> horrible. <laughs> hey, I, I, um, I was looking up Copernicus. He, he died in 1543. He was, he was from Poland. Yeah. <clears throat> for that other caller that was, that was inquiring. Yeah, yeah, I've got a quote from him for the peanut gallery. Um, Mathematics is written only for mathematicians. That's the quote. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's like he's saying, like, if you speak Spanish, only people can speak that that understand Spanish can can understand it. Doesn't mean it's the only thing that's kind of explains what they're describing. You know, it's like yeah. it's like physics. It's like people who who know a bit about physics can understand it, but doesn't mean it it just it should be used for everything in the world. Like yeah, we, we've we've got perfectly good answers for the the flat Earth. It doesn't mean physics is right. And <laughs> oh yeah, I I try to tell the academics. When, whenever I can, it's like, look, every time you try to bring up math, you know, like uh, uh, geometry or trigonometry or calculus, every time you try to do that to beat us, you've already lost because most of the audience out there knows almost nothing about these about these things. So you're you're just falling on deaf ears. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, putting all this complex information out there to explain something and. Who, who's going to say anything against it when you know nothing about it? Right, <laughs> right. Hey, the um, the peanut gallery has a, a quick comeback quote for you, which is, "Be careful about reading health books. You may die of a misprint." That's from Mark Twain. <laughs> Mark Twain comes out with an unlimited amount of quotes, doesn't he? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> Mark Twain, American humorist. <laughs> oh, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and of course my favorite book that was unpublished, one of his last books that he never finished, which was called Mysterious Stranger. <laughs> my normal phone is blowing up uh, off the hook. Did something happened in the news recently? My cell phone, I, have my, I don't have my cell phone piping through this computer, and my cell phone has just not stopped ringing since the show started. And I don't give out my cell phone number except on the, on the videos. 
Oh, it must be getting some views, Mark. Yeah. Have you done any CNN or any, any interviews or anything like that in the mainstream yet? Well, have you done I, any have, I have, but they haven't been published yet. Like, uh, I, I've been waiting because oh, HBO, HBO wants to do a meetup in Seattle and they want me to host it. And CNN, I did the interview, but they haven't done the follow-ups with the subject matter experts yet. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll cross my fingers. Well, it's going to be a great, great lead up into the conference. I was just, yeah. um, I was just ringing up to bust your balls a bit. There's only sixty dollars to go until you sing your song. So maybe next week on your show. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, I've got the lyrics for. I don't have the lyrics in front of me, but yes, if it comes to that, yes, I will sing. It will be horrible. Uh, because it's a soft song and my voice is not exactly, I mean, it's, it's gentle enough, but I don't know if I could actually, it gets in the wrong pitch for me, but I'll do it. I'll do it for, for the cause. I will we'll do it. I've done, I've done worse. For the cool. So I don't mind. In fact, I heard peanut gallery <laughs> singing on a hangout just a little while ago, just, just a tiny little, little thing. I don't know why, but anyway, anything no, else? Be hard I I've I've got like three That's more it. calls. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll let, anything else? I'll let you go, man. Have a good show. That's All right, it. have a good one. I'll let you go. Right. Have a good night. See you, mate. Bye bye. -bye. Okay, Australia's down. We've got Nebraska up four o two area code. Let's let's grab them if we can. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let me one second here. Why does that noise sound so familiar? Give me one second. Oh, Nebraska. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My memory's pretty good. That that area code for Nebraska, I'm afraid we can't take that call. That uh, That is a troll. So I got you just with memory. I'm not that old. Drop caller. Goodbye. Clunk. <laughs> uh, let's pick up Grand's Rap Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids, Michigan, you're up. Hit me. And Grand Rapids is gone. I didn't I didn't drop Grand Rapids though. Let's try 845. 845 area code. 845. Hey Mark. Can you hear hey. me? I, I I can hear you. What's going on Hello. out in New York? Hello there. <laughs> uh, not much. Beautiful really night. the way you said that made it sound only only mostly gay. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> That's great. Why didn't you That's just say? Great. Why didn't you just say help? Well, oh, help, yeah, no. boy. Seriously. Yeah, I, actually, I should have been. Forgive me, Father, for I sinned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? Man. Are we going to try to turn this you're into never a thing? the end of that? Really? No, I don't think it should be a thing, but it could be. I think the I am Mark Sargent is the thing. That's it. That's that works. Because I am. Because for the the Atlanta thing, I am going to be wearing. Solidarity. I am going to be wearing the "I am Mark Sargent" T-shirt in uh, when I'm down in Atlanta. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, that's because remember, it's a religious great. conference. They may not know who I am. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But that's so actually I'll, a good idea. I I may come off like a disabled person, but I'm not going to mimic one of those. You know, where they put their name on the shirt. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's so. great. Um, anyway, what's going on? How are you doing this week? Uh, I've got no Popping complaints. out videos like crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, you've Man, been. It's amazing. It's, well, it's, we broke, you know, we broke 18 million on the, on the search results. That's awesome. And now it's just, awesome. there's so many hangouts. The thing, I, my, my only complaint about the Flat Earth crowd, and again, I'm not knocking, I know you've been guilty of it, and Candy has, it's like, look, do you really, I mean, five hour, six hour, eight hour hangouts, they're just so long. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to go yeah. through them, but I mean, there is a lot, you know, I will say they, they add to yeah, the I metrics. Have to edit them. I mean, Flat Earth is probably cranking out more minutes per topic than any other topic right now. Oh, yeah. And I mean, and honestly, if you edit out eight hours, at chop up eight hours, you could probably come up with a solid hour of great content. Oh, probably. I mean, it just varies. 
But nobody, nobody just, edits it's their up stuff. Up and down, different categories. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's that? that? Well, nobody edits their stuff though. You know, they all just put it. It's like, oh, it's eight hours. Right. Just leave it. It's like, oh, killing me. Yeah. Just, I just should do that. Me. All right. All right. Hey, I'll by the way, I have a quote this. for oh. you from um, from oh, Peanut okay. Gallery. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. That's Christopher Hitchens. Mm. Yeah, that week, which I like can be. That. Yeah, it's pretty good. It is good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have one to it. Uh, this was this, a little light talk. I heard some good news today. The FBI and the CIA are going to start cooperating. They're going to start working together. And if you don't know the difference between the FBI and the CIA, the FBI bungles domestic crime. The CIA bungles foreign crime. (laughs) That's David Letterman. I love that. That's good. That's good. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man, I watched a bunch of movies. Oh, dude. I watched Fear the Walking Dead. I've been waiting all week. I've been, I didn't even want to Skype you and tell you this because I've been waiting there just to tell you. Yeah. I was watching Fear the Walking Dead, the zombie show, every week. Mm-hmm. One of the characters goes back to his stranded yacht, gets on the radio. He's just trying to get anybody to talk to. Guess who comes on the radio? A Russian cosmonaut in space. Uh. <laughs> in the zombie show. I was like, Really? Uh, it was pathetic. It was wow. I mean, I liked the show, and it was interesting. But I'm like, really? They even put it in the zombie show? Really? Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And then I saw Trump speaking today, or it might have been yesterday, and with a spacesuit behind him, the flag, a spacesuit, and all this stuff. And they weren't even talking about space. It was just there. Uh, I hope. I hope and pray that the CNN article, if they release it, is not, you know, super cruel, you know, but I can only hope that. Hey, you can only just, you know, say the truth, say what you know, what, yep. what you've been told, you know, what else can you do? Yeah. yeah. You know, By I, the way, um, and this leads into my. Oh, no, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I have another quote I was going to hit you with. Uh, Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. And that is also Mark Twain. <laughs> I like that too. That's Always awesome. try to just, just try to get a little, be a little better. Try to be a little better. Nice. That's excellent. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Cool. Anything else? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, no, I watched Truman Show again. That was just, <laughs> Love it. it. It's funny when you watch it and then you think, wow, could that really be on a grand scale how it is? And they did, the movie did it, a real good job of, of oh, portraying yeah. that, that he was inside sure. the simulation. It was good. Yeah. I yeah. It. I mean, a Truman show Oops. isn't for, isn't for everybody. I mean, it's, it's light, but you know, the sci-fi no. version of it, like the, the, the darker version would be dark city. And then the the no bones cheap version of it would be the village from M Night Shyamalan. You know, that's for me. I I love that right. movie just because like look they didn't even have to build a dome. They just went out in the woods and built a town, and the kids believed it. So why wouldn't they? You, know, right. you you do that for a few generations. What what do you think happens? You know, again, people should not feel upset that they fell for the globe Earth because this sucker was put in place. 20 at least 20 generations ago you didn't have a chance you know your your parents your grandparents yeah. there's nobody alive that remembers the flat earth not even close so anyway right. or would even think about it absolutely yeah or would you even right. consider absolutely it absolutely right yeah institutions have been built since the ground up uh, with with this in mind so totally. yeah yeah absolute pro- programming I, I mean and you're right it's it just goes right. You don't even have to lie. You're not lying. This is what everyone believes. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's a great con. Things. I I love it. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's the greatest street magic trick ever, which is you know everybody everybody the 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 short version I try to tell people. I'll give this to you real quick. The the less than ninety second version, which is by the way six one two. Call in on the backup number if you're having problems. It's two one three. 
213-333-3998. That's 213-233-3998. 612, it just keeps piling in, and he's going nowhere. I don't know who this is. Anyway, my, the 92nd version of that – oh, hang on. The peanut gallery keeps sending something to me. Oh, boy. All right, hang on. Um, two quotes for you from the peanut gallery. Uh, one is, the most incomprehensible thing about the world is that it is comprehensible. That's Albert Einstein. And the second right. one is a student talking to Einstein. He says, Dr. Einstein, aren't these the same questions as last year's physics final exam? Dr. Einstein says, yes, but this year the answers are different. Ah, it's funny. Let's see what happened there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I'll, a, I'll end you with this. The, so the, true. What I'm, what I'm trying to tell people is, like, look, okay, you want to you wanna throw a wrench into somebody's mind in 90 seconds or less. You throw this at them. You say, okay, how do you know you're in a globe right now? And eventually, we'll, we'll treat this like a chess game. Eventually, they're going to say, because of a space program, whatever space program. You say, fine, how did you know before the space program? And then they're going to say, because of science. Science proved. Science showed us proof. Science told us. I go, yes, science told you. What exactly did they tell you? And that's when their wheels start grinding because nobody remembers the experiments that they're talking about. Yeah, I mean, if you're lucky, you might you might get sticks and shadows. If you're lucky, you might get curved uh, curved shadow on the moon, but more, or, or you know boats going over the horizon. You know, to date there is no boat going going over the horizon globe test, and that's where you kind of start pushing them backwards. It's like, how do you know? You were told. That's it. The space program. That's just a cop out you can use now. But what happened before the space program? Because most people are alive. I mean, you, you're old enough to remember, you know, before 1972, probably, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm, 60, I'm born in 67. I'm 50. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah, that's, I remember, but that's, I that's why I'm going to blow up. in the late 60s, 70s. That's what I'm going to throw at reporters now. And I've been kind of throwing it at media. It's like, okay, how do you know? How do you know? Because the institution... People will do anything yeah. to protect it. Anything, anything. So, anyway, uh, shout out you want to do before I move on? Yeah, to, to everybody out there, all, all the Flat Earth family, Daniel, Daniel, my wife who thinks I'm gay for being so into the Flat Earth. She's standing here looking, staring at me. <laughs> uh, funny. Everybody. I just, I just love everybody. This is awesome. I'm having, I'm having fun with it. Oh my God! Um, do you know who? Do you know who the number was? was that, by She's the way, do you know who the number was that kept calling in time and time again? Do you know who that was? Oh uh, yeah, who was the troll? Who was it? No, 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 no! Okay. Not the troll! Not the troll! The the normal number that just kept calling oh. and hit redial. I'll give you a guess. He's he's usually he usually calls from prison. <laughs> Wesley Stays flatter than dog. <laughs> That's so now awesome. he's like asking. You know, now he's asking that's for the backup different. number. So I gotta give him. I gotta get. I gotta paste in the backup uh, number for him real quick. Of course, uh, of course, it's too West. Too funny. Oh my god. He's, yeah, he's on break. He's in the prison lunchroom right now. Yeah, so he's just hitting redial <laughs> every six seconds. He's just redial, redial, redial. Okay, uh, so now I've given him the, the new number. It's like, dude, you're killing me. Uh. Anyway. Uh. All righty. All right. Well, yeah, hey. Fun. Take some more calls and enjoying the callers. Everybody's been great. Loving it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I will talk to you, my friend, soon. All righty. All right. Bye-bye. All right. See ya. Oh. Okay. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm simulcasting. I'm, hello. I'm simulcasting your show, and uh, I'll have a hangout later. Bye. Okay. Then I, I won't say anything weird like yeah. hot sex. All right. Right. Thank you. Bye. Got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to pick up 612 area code. 612, the backup number worked. Yes, it did. You know, I thought my finger was going to fall off. You got me on the uh, do not call list. What? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it, what happens is is it pipes through the 720. Well, okay, the 720 number routes through the switchboard on TFR, but it forwards it to through the number on TFR. And for some reason, 90, 90% of the, the calls work fine. But So what happens when you call? 
Yeah, it's only when I call. Would first. you get like a fast busy signal or something? No, it just shuts me off. When I call, it just blink. It's like someone hung up on me. Weird. Yeah. The back yeah. of that's what the back of no, number's for. So you know what? Maybe in the next trailer well, I'll put in the new number. I'll put in uh two That would probably two. be you know, the better thing is, Mark, is, uh, hey, we're going to open up the lines. Here's the new number. Just start yeah, saying that. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> I got to put this in here. I got to log it in. Uh, Brian gave it to me a while back, and I forgot to put it in um, in my uh, contacts. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been calling the other number. That's no biggie. Okay. That's all right. So all anyhow, right. I wanted to correct you on one thing that you had talked to one of the people who called in about, uh, you know, we didn't know until the combustion engine came out and this and that. Right. Not quite true, because you have to remember 1932, August Picard, went up in a hot air balloon, went, what, 10 miles or something? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but even then, he yeah, he had a pretty good idea, but he didn't have controlled flight, is what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that the first sure. ones... The first one, what? But but Bird, he remember Bird was higher. But he went a lot higher than any airplane back in the time. He did, but okay. So Picard's thing was what? Thirty-one? Did you say? Uh, nineteen thirty-two. Okay, thirty-two. Remember the um, uh, Admiral Bird's flight to the North Pole is in nineteen twenty-six, and then nineteen twenty-eight he headed down to Antarctica. So they already had a pretty good That's idea. So Picard going up there, right, they right. weren't worried too much because remember he didn't have any control over the balloon, so he could say whatever he wanted. But it was like, all right, sure. Fine. So yeah, going no one... across, going across the planet would be different than obviously going up. I got right. it. Right, right. But they also so didn't he encourage was a lot of people to do that. After after him, you would have thought there would have been a lot more people doing it. Oh yeah, but you know they they, they discredit him, you know, because he because of what he said. Uh, yeah. The planet looks like a long flat plane curving upward, or right. whatever he said. Right. Upturn. So up I guess I kind of. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Upturned engine. Yeah. yeah. And they, I think they probably discredited him right then and there and said he's a wackle. <laughs> he did not get enough oxygen when he went up. By the way, um, the the peanut gallery says you didn't get through. Sorry, what? I was. I said peanut gallery. Yeah, let them go. The the peanut gallery says that you were disconnected because you didn't put enough dimes in the prison payphone. That's why I kept dropping. Although I disagree. I, dimes. I was like, we, we we haven't used dimes in payphones in a long, long time. I know. I was just gonna say. <laughs> And that, that, by the way, is where the saying comes from, dropping the dime on someone. I bet you most, most street guys don't know that. Dropping the dime means dropping, you know, ratting someone out, you know, calling somebody. You're putting the dime in the payphone and calling the cops. That's why I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's good. See, oh, but, but without video, it's going to be lost because people aren't going to understand. You're not calling. That's why. When is the last time you used pay? I actually, I have used payphone because remember, up until a couple of years ago, I didn't even have a cell phone because I hate them. I, I hate I, smartphones are just the bane of existence. But I have to have this because it's, I want to. I want to keep my number of twenty years. Sure, and it, it took you how long before you actually got a smartphone from the flip phone? Oh no no no! I didn't even have a flip phone. I had I had. But I mean, when you your first, when you got your first, first cell phone, wasn't it a flip phone? Well, the companies that I worked for when I was doing business travel, yeah, those were flip phones, but they weren't mine. They were the company's, so I don't count those. But the second I stopped doing business travel, I dropped cell phones altogether and only used landlines because I like the sound quality. I love corded phones with corded handsets. I'm old school, super old school. And uh, so when cell phones came out, it just drove me nuts. Right, right. And yeah, one, and one he, thing I wanted to mention about... No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, we saw we uh, Kathy Gillis and uh, Maynard G. Krebs. What do you want to do today, Globe? Uh, 
What do you want to do, Maynard? I don't know, Dope. What do you want to do? Yeah, um, just, anyhow, go ahead. Well, that'll bring you back. Yeah. Um, Patricia Steer, when she does her little test tomorrow, right. please tell her to go ahead and put those needles, the little tip needles, and soak them in alcohol. I don't trust anybody. I'm. I'm sure she will do that. I hope she's. I'm pretty know, sure she's. Patricia at. is going to be. Patricia Steer is going to be doing a live blood test on air, where rumor has it she's actually going to be cutting off her own hand. <laughs> Boy, now that's that, that's taking a conspiracy just a wee bit too far. Well, it'll grow back because she's a lizard person. It's totally cool. Oh, well, that's that's true. Yeah. 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 I got but, to ask, you know, I, I said it in, 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 in uh, one, of the, one of the chats, um, why do women shave off their eyebrows and then freaking paint them back on? I don't, I don't get it. Can somebody explain? Uh, it gives you more control over what you have going on above your eyes. Yeah, but some of them look like clowns. It's like your eyebrows don't go down that far to your uh, eye. Dude, I lady. don't. I look. Uh, a woman's mind is a mystery in so many ways. And there's the other conspiracy thing we got to get into. Hey, we, we're, go we're going to music here in just a bit. Do quick shout outs. Quick, 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 quick. All my shout outs to my all, all my favorites. And even you, Peanut Gallery, you weirdo. Nice. That's great. All right. Well, hey, thank you, guys. Uh, next time you get uh, phone privileges, you, you make sure you call us, okay? Yeah, I'll have to roll tonight, so there's someone's doing a show. I'll be in there. <laughs> All right. No hate. No hype. No fear. We are DFR. Your protection from, from deception. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And let's see. Peanut Gallery saying some obscene things in chat, so I'm not going to answer that. Oh, look, there's somebody from <clears throat> Oakland, Fertile, California. Oakland... I don't know what that abbreviation is. It's a really long name, so let's figure it out. It's 510, area code. 510, you are on with Strange World. Last segment, what do you got? Mark, 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 what's going on? Chris Hey. Burke, hey. <laughs> yeah, Oakland. Uh, Oakland. Uh, I guess we just tagged down to Oakland, California, but whatever. It's all the time. That's okay. What's going on with you? Uh, just taking a whole bunch of calls, trying to get through the announcements. And after this, I got to make two more meetup trailers, one for Vegas and one for, what's the other one for? Another one's for another, another one in Colorado. So lots of, lots of stuff happening. What's going on? What's, what's going on with you? Um, oh man, too much. Just uh, two quick comments. Uh, number one, I finally watched the village, man. I'm sorry, say it one more time. Of oh, the village. I finally got an opportunity to watch it. Oh, yeah. What'd you think? Oh, man. Oh, I mean, you know, uh, I, I think if I would have watched it before I got into Flat Earth, it probably wouldn't have interested me as much as it did, you know, because you were mentioning it all the time. And I was like, man, I got to watch this movie. So it popped up on YouTube. And yeah, man, you know, compartmentalization, man, but that's a, that's a, that's a good one to try to send folks too, man. I mean, yeah. it was awesome, you know, yeah. uh, the way it was done. So yeah, I really appreciate it. M, M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan's uh, movie, The Village, it, it is a really great aspect. In fact, it, it really is an expansion of what was said in the Truman Show, where they said, we believe the world that is presented to us. 
And that's what the village would show you. It's like, look, you could do anything you want. If it's if you start out with children, you can put them anywhere and they will believe what you're going to tell them. You know, it's that whole empty vessel thing. And that was the perfect example of it. They they thought they were living in the 1800s. So. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. That's very good. And my uh, second quick comment, I uh, wanted to uh, comment on uh, one of you and Patricia's show. I think y'all spoke about it uh, on last week's episode in regards to you were talking about everybody needs to uh, start sharpening up their tools in regards to, uh, you know, the information that they put right. forth when the questions are back. Right. And then also, you know, something my, something my pastor always shared with me a long time ago, if you don't know something, I'll start making it up. Just say you don't know. You know? Right. And, right. Because uh, that that little right there, you don't come off looking like a total fool. Because obviously, you know, some of us are a little bit more savvy than others. But at the same time, you know, if you just constantly putting out the fact that you know things don't add up and uh, can't find no curve, and, and you know, just de- just deal with just deal with the just deal with the simple aspects, you know, and uh, allow your fellow brothers and sh- uh, sisters, uh, flat earthers, uh, aid you in the way, we'll be okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it, it just uh, it just occurred to me that with the media now coming in a whole bunch of different directions, that there's going to be people out there that haven't really been asked the questions before. I mean, yeah, they know some basic information, but it's right. different when, when somebody's asking it and they're writing it down, you know, like they're paying really close attention yeah, exactly. to you, because then you're like thinking, uh, all right, did I get it right? Because you only get, you know, one chance to do it. And it's, it, yeah. but so far it's gone really well. I'm, I, I, everybody's been doing a great job. So, not worried. Yeah, yeah, well, well, for the most part, I mean, I would, you know, because you are getting into such a topic as, 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 as wide and as, and as, you know, as vast as this, you know, you, you, you have to, Bobby, you got to go in because, I mean, you're going to just everything. But yeah. uh, it was, uh, it's not, it's not flat earth related, but it does tie into what we're talking about on ESPN today. Uh, you know, the summer league basketball is going on. And they was talking about the summer league and, the, you know, the, uh, the, the wannabe up and comers and so on and so forth. Right. So they was asking a couple of fans about uh, some, some, some dummy players. They just threw out some random names. But they was asking them, yeah, so what do you think about, you know, Kurt, uh, Kurt, 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 Kurt Freak? How do you feel like he's going to do? Well, you know, I think he's going to be fine. And this wasn't even a real person. So, you know, that's my point. <laughs> don't go about there trying to say something that you don't know. And then exactly. Like, yeah, so I heard that, you know, this guy did pretty well in college and so on and so forth. Yeah, you know, I think he's going to do pretty well. So, and so yeah, let's, let's not go out there and make it up to that, man. You know, just stick to the basics. And if you don't know, just simply say, hey, I don't have an answer for that. But one thing I do know, the reality that's been presented to us, we a whole lot of questions. And just that right there alone. It's the thing that got me going, so on and so forth. Well said. Excellent, excellent point, man. And yeah, you you get a good point. It's because yeah, if somebody if somebody asks you a term and you've never heard of it, I I'll be the first one to say it. it's like somebody throws out it's like the the Fritzel widgets, you know, um, uh, scenario. It's like, dude, I have never heard of that in my life. What are you talking about? You know, because at this point, if I haven't heard about exactly. it, then I'm worried. But again, not everybody's exactly. going to know everything. <laughs> Most definitely. And it's okay. And it's okay. And I really credit my mom to that because she told me in a very early age, hey, if you don't have the answer for it, man, just ask. Because there's one thing about in this world, people are more than willing to try to give you some information. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? All right, man. Anything else? Most definitely. Most definitely. But that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. Shout out to my, to my big bro, uh, uh, Mark in New York, and all of the fellow uh, Flat Earth family, man, man. Let's just keep this thing flat, man. Stay on the beaten path, and uh, yeah, let's see what this thing takes us. All right, man. Hey, you have a good one out in California. All right, take care, Mark. It's always good to talk to you, man. All right. All right, see you, man. All right, see you. Okay, who do we got on the phone? We got 425. That's fairly close. That's that's an Everett. Let's try Everett. Everett, Washington, are you still there? Right, Mark. Well, 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 Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent. Well, well, well. You ended up with the title, Mark. You ended up with the Flat Earth Father oh, God. title. Seriously, you're going to do and, that? Yeah. Really? Is it a thing? No really? Re- no, really. I got to. I got to. I got to. <laughs> you blessed all your children. Each one of these events that went on, 
you helped everybody out, you promoted. And when I actually stopped and think about it, thought about it, Mark, you know, Matt, he could have got the title, but he didn't want to do the work. And he's also unstable. And yeah. so congratulations. You deserve it. And now if we can just get Patricia Steer as mother flat earth, <laughs> uh, we'll be set. We'll be good to go. But uh, the reason why I called in, Mark, uh, I know you got this conference on the East Coast booked out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I really think that you could do another one uh, probably in January on the West Coast. Uh, I think you could book that out uh, as well. You might be right. Um, I mean, have you thought? You might, you might oh, be yeah. right. Because, cause, I mean, there's there's three conferences technically happening, happening this summer and, and into the fall. There's one in Atlanta in three weeks. I'm going to be going to that, but I'm not presenting. There's one in Cleveland, Ohio with Rob Skiba, which is happening in September. Then the Raleigh, North Carolina one in November. But yeah, I, you could be you could be right. I, I, I'm kind of waiting to see what this new wave of media stories pans out to, to be. To you know, I want I want to see where that's going. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we if we went to yeah, well, you did uh, the West Coast. You thing. did the work, Mark. Yeah, you you did the work. Uh, nobody's promoted Flat Earth more, done more time, more shows, more radio. I mean, all these other guys, uh, Matt Powerlin, uh, Eric Dubay, you know, I don't want to say they're lazy, but they just didn't do the work. And, yeah. you know, you, you were politically right. You didn't, there's some things you didn't touch. And, I mean, you kept it, you, you pretty much kept it right. Well, so, thank you. Uh, you just, I mean, I, I, mean, yeah, I, just, I don't. You know me, I don't like to criticize the the uh, the other people too much, but in Eric's case, I don't exactly know what he where he was going with this because, you know, you can't mix go you, you can't mix flat earth with going after a demographic group, plus he never left Thailand. It's like, look, you've got to be you know, unfortunately you're going to have to be in the states or in in Europe at the very least if you're going to get ahead of this thing. And then Matt, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Matt had every chance in the world to to do to do great things, but he just he just kept playing that uh, the the aloof artist card, and it, it killed me every time. You know, again, that there is the the story uh, you've heard me say this before, where the first six interviews, I'm not kidding you, people called me up asking how to get a hold of Matt. And I was one of the few people with Matt's phone number at the time. And I, I called Matt. And I was like, Matt, they want to talk to you. Oh, I'm not doing I'm not doing interviews, blah, blah. You know, try to keep them at arm's length. And what do you think happened? I call him back and I say, look, Matt, does, Matt doesn't do any interviews. He goes, look, we need to talk to somebody about Flat Earth. Would you like to talk to us about Flat Earth? I said, you know what? Yes, I would. And that's how it started. And he never. Yeah, no, you promote. Mark, you promoted everybody. You didn't step on anybody to get the title. I mean, you deserve it fair and square. You you did the work. Um, You know, I just hope you can set some conferences up. Texas can do a be be a conference by itself, and then uh, put one up in um, uh, Northern California or something. I'm sure that can be booked out. But you guys are going to get it together. You all are on the same page, and we can see the whole group of you working for the same uh, self interest. So. But anyways, I had to call in. Uh, congratulations, and I just hope that that Matt doesn't because he's unstable recently, especially with the fallout with F E F E A. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Flat Earth asshole. So I don't know what's going on there, but he's really I don't know what. But I'd worry about his mental health once he hears that you you got the title of Father Flat Earth. Yeah, I, My I God. know. I know. So I don't know how so, he's missed it to date. Honestly, I thought the second I thought somebody would have forwarded him the Denver Post article, but I think he was too distracted with FEA to care. And yeah, it, it, but I, but hey, you know what? I, I I I gave him credit in so many interviews that now oh, that's I right. was like, all right, fine. I, I tried. Yeah, you're done, right? Yeah, yeah, you so. did it for over a year, year and a half. Yeah. No, you got it fair and square. You got it fair and square, Mark. Well, thank okay. you. Okay. Well, thank um. You. Uh, nice, nice talking to you, and I'll call you again. Okay, man. Have a good one. Take care. God bless. Uh, bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see how many more calls we can pack in. We got uh, the Twin Cities at Minnesota. at 612 area code. Let's try them, shall we? 612 area code. Where are you? Hey, Mark. 
Uh, Mike in Minnesota, how are you? Hey, pretty good. What's going on, Mike? How's, hey, <laughs> not too much. How's life in the uh, Pacific Northwest? Oh, it's good. It's been a really warm summer up here. Yeah. Hardly any rain. It was a terrible winter, but it's making up for it, and all the grass is brown here because we don't need sprinkler systems. So it's good. Yeah, yeah right on. Or air conditioning. But, uh, yeah, or air so conditioning. You, you absolutely don't know what right. to do when it gets hot. But, uh, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, no, it's true. Nobody's got air summer conditioning. Summer night here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Hey, uh, I hadn't called in in a while. I thought I'd uh, check in, and um, you know, I've been out on this uh, on ODD's uh, live chat every day. That's uh, okay. that's pretty fun format out there. You know, going head to head with some of these Globers out there. So it definitely uh, sharpens your skills. Yeah. For um, you know, but uh, you know, the, the one thing I was going to call in, what I wanted to say was, you know, I see all these people out there. Show me the proof, and uh, you know, let me. I want to see this thing, and blah blah blah. And it's like, well, we're never going to be able to get high enough to see it uh, from like a bird's eye perspective, God's eye perspective. Uh, you're yeah. not going to get out to the edge. We are stuck here in Middle Earth. So, what can we? You know, how can we piece this puzzle together to know? that it's flat right and i mean when you take when you take and you know the you can corroborate this evidence together and i mean you take it there's no observable curvature the horizon rises to meet the eye level no matter how high you go right um you know take five seconds sit still and you realize this this thing is not moving thus it cannot be a spinning ball and so you know you know by default um from fluid dynamics that the oceans have to be level. We see the sun and the moon and the sky, uh, same size, you know, following the same path. I mean, you can piece all these puzzles together, you know, these pieces of the puzzle together. And I mean, you get, you arrive at the a knowing that this thing is flat. I mean, this thing is a, a massive flat plane. And I mean, I don't know what more you can, I don't know what more pieces of evidence you could piece together to, you know, even like the 24 hour sun in Alaska. I mean, you, you're not going to be able to see that if there's any land North of you, you that would obscure your vision of the sun right. for some, for some period as, you know what I mean? I mean, there's all these pieces that go together that just inevitably lead to the conclusion that this thing is flat. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know what more you can tell, is people looking into it other than to just keep studying it, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know, that's yeah. been my, it's been, uh, no, I was just going to say that's just some of the stuff I throw out there on the, the live chat when I'm talking with these people. I mean, you can, the stuff is, uh, you know, it, all these pieces add up to the fact that this thing is a stationary, massive flat plane. I mean, it right. just, can arrive you can't arrive at any other conclusion right i mean would you i mean obviously you agree but yeah but um i don't know that's been uh that so that's been fun being out in the chat trying to trying to go at it with these guys you know there's there's not people eight thousand miles below you walking upside down you know you're not you're not hurtling through space at 67 mile 67,000 miles an hour true i mean i don't know True. Yeah, Good so points. I've got some. So I was going to ask you. Yeah, I was going to ask your opinion on. Uh, I've got some videos that I'm afraid to upload to my uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> that I've Why? Filmed, I filmed some stuff around. Just well, I don't know. Just uh, you know, I'm hesitant to put it out there, but uh, might, I might have some uh, some content that I upload finally. I've got a, I've got about four or five videos that I filmed. It's just little stuff, you know, little. Little no. uh, experiments and stuff like that. Observations uh, as it goes through the day, but don't don't be hesitant. I mean, if you if you I mean if you want, tell you what, if do this, put one up, mark it as unlisted, and then send me the link, and I'll I'll take a quick look at it. How's that sound? Yeah, all right, I'll do that. I'll People do that. do that to me um, all the time. They say, hey, can you yeah, look at yeah. my video and give me some recommendations? Like, yeah, sure. Okay. All right, I'll shoot you a link. It'll, it'll come from uh, my chat room name. My uh, YouTube name out there is Level Plain Field. Okay. So I, uh, that's that's where it'll come from. But, okay. um, but anyway, man, I'll just keep up the good work. And 
don't know. It looks like you. Uh, thanks for the video props on uh, on uh, hot pot- you know flat earth and other hot potatoes. Those cookies I sent you. Sounds like you uh, you enjoyed those. <laughs> ha- ha- happy happy to do it. Happy to do it. Those those were yeah, the finest man. the fa- the yeah. finest cookies I've ever received in the mail, literally. Yeah, good. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Well, let's turn those on to you. Um, I don't know. That's about all I've got. I don't want to take all your time here, but okay. But uh, yeah. So keep up the keep up the efforts, and uh, I guess we'll see you in November. Okay. Uh, well, I'll probably Raleigh, talk to you North before then. Carolina. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Let's see if we can do a speed round. Uh, We'll pick up Akron, Ohio. That is 330 area code. Let's pick him up real quick. And then Beverly Hills might be back on. We'll see. All right. 330 area code. What's going on out in Ohio? Howdy, Mark. Uh, This is uh, Fireman Mike from, uh, well, you just said it from Akron, Ohio. We've talked <laughs> talked a couple of times. I got hey. a quick question for you. Yeah. Off topic. Uh, at the eleven thirty break, what is the what is the name of that tune that you play before you go to break? Um, before the eleven thirty break. So that's going to it's, music it's before Joe Jackson. On the way out, is it, is, it a, is it a female singer or a male singer? It's a female singer. Oh, that would be uh, Peaches Operate. So the band name is Peaches, and the song is called Operate, I believe. Operate. Okay, I was just really curious about that. That's a an yeah. It's an interesting tune, little anyway. song. I didn't know much about Peaches. I was not a Peaches fan, and then I watched one of my guilty pleasure movies was a movie called Mean Girls, and they used a Peaches uh-huh. song. In fact, I think it was that song. So hang on, let me look it up real fast for you. Peaches operate. <clears throat> yeah, it's literally called Peach. It's it, the band is Peaches. The the band the 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 song is called Operate. And okay. interesting interesting band. In fact, uh, the the I think they they quote her as being the sexiest ugly ugly girl you'd ever want to meet. Uh, it's, it's some unusual sounding music. I just wanted to hear the rest of it, so I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It Check it out if you get a chance. It's a really interesting song, but, uh, and uh, so yeah. But I learned about it through Mean Girls. Did not know much about them beforehand, and uh, I'm I'm a fan of Peaches now. Okay. Well, Anything else? And, uh, uh, yeah, real quick, Skiba in Cleveland. Do you in September? Do you have any details on that? Yeah, or, yeah. Or? Go to. Skiba in Cleveland, go to takeontheworld17.com. So that's takeontheworld17.com. That's September 15th through 17th. The guy that's running it, I even have the phone number of the guy that's running it if you want it. Oh, go ahead, shoot. It's uh, Uh 440-668-6373. Okay. Yeah, but the website uh, is just take, take on the world 17.com. Okay. And then I had a quick observation. Yeah. Uh, I talked to you a while back about how I thought the argument for aircraft maintaining, you know, what the aircraft would have to constantly trim the nose down to right. Right. To stay at altitude on the globe. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I know you're pressed for time here. I'll try That's to be okay. quick, but, it, but if, but if you, if the world is flat, and if magnetic north, well, if you know, obviously, if geographic north is at the center of that disk, mm-hmm. and if magnetic north is, you know, some miles, you know, straight south of there, right, and magnetic navigation works on a globe, right. I don't see. I don't see. And I'm. It's not a criticism. This is just a puzzlement to me. I don't see how magnetic navigation would work on a flat mer uh, on a uh, flat Earth. Given that the AE map, no one's saying that that's the map of the flat Earth. Right. But if the Earth is flat, it must be something like that, because all of the thing, you know, all of the localities line up on this longitude and this latitude, right. and and this and that. So if if <clears throat> 
on the flat earth, if you were to fly, you know, fly right above a line of latitude, you could right. navigate magnetically east to west or west to east. No problem. The compass would, it would jive with this theory of the flat earth. Right. But as soon as you cross a line of longitude, say you were flying from uh, Baja Peninsula to the upper tip of Maine. Yeah. And you're crossing all these lines of longitude, which now don't really, and I understand on a globe, they converge at the poles. Right. But on a, on a uh, sectional aeronautical chart or a world aeronautical chart, you know, they run parallel. Now there's, I'm not talking about wind correction or air traffic control, diverting you around controlled areas or uh, magnetic declination, you know, uh, but, you know, we all understand that. But if you, if on a world aeronautical chart and, you know, and also, you know, pilots navigate, they'll just use a radio beacon. They'll just point yeah. the airplane at the, the, at the radio beacon. Mm -hmm. um, but if you were just navigating in the clear blue sky by the compass, on a world aeronautical chart and, and take all those other things out of the equation, which you can for the purpose of this mm -hmm. question. If you're flying from southwestern California to northeastern Maine, the lines of longitude, they're at a different angle every time you cross them. You could not navigate by compass. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see how point. you do it. Because because the lines of longitude diverge as they move towards the edge of the disk. Right. And I just, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I'm just. Uh, I'm going to use the example that we talked about earlier in the show. And I'm going to say, I don't know on that one. I, I don't, I'm going to have to start asking around and, and see. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my first impression would be that, well, if it's a commercial flight, they're just going to use the GPS system anyway. Which is right. going to tell yeah, them? They're, they're, they're going to follow. They're going to follow instruments. But uh, but your you know, but your smaller planes, like my brother-in-law's Cessna, what's he using? So well, good point. Well, if he's flying locally, he's he's probably just using a sectional aeronautical chart, which just shows a couple of hundred miles. Right. And, and, you know, and maybe it, it doesn't matter. Right. But, I mean, if you were flying any distance, every time you cross the line, which you know, you know, there's. There's an infinite number of lines of longitude, right. but say there's 360 of them. Right. Every time you cross a, a line of longitude, that compass heading, you, in other words, you couldn't plot a course. You can plot a course. No, no, I got you. I got you. Hate, hate to do this to right. you. We're, okay. we're actually, the show's, we're actually running out of time now. Um, okay. Hey, hey, no problem. I keep up the good work and I will right. talk to you later. Okay, man. Thank you, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, we're going to we're going to sign off the show here real quick and uh, before we do remember tomorrow I will be on Flat Earth and other hot potatoes that's 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh Robbie Davidson is going to have uh, some announcements for the North Carolina conference and Patricia Steer is going to be doing a blood test to figure out if she's RH uh, whatever that is, which means I think she's probably going to take off her whole arm to do this. I don't mean to attach it, I mean like machete, just take her off her arm to see if she can get a blood sample. I don't know what's going to work. To be honest, Trier is better. You can treat yourself. Thank you to the peanut gallery. Thank you for everybody that called in. And uh, until next time, uh, you know, stay flat. But uh, come, oh, wait, wait, peanut gallery wants to remind me. Oh, right, because I'm going to forget that, right? So, um, you know, next Dude, next time it'll be the this? same flat time, same flat channel. What is this? Is, the, is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>